Hi, I'm John the Engineer, Great Canadian Gambler, Tosh Professor of Poker Systems Engineering, Termel. And this is Poker Power Tool number six, Playable Hand System, from my book, Play Holding Poker Like a Bookie. And it is a wonderful little tool that developed after Michael J. Berry's book, Bix Nuts, where he figured out the probabilities of all hands playing against from one to ten opponents. And I condensed that down into a little tool I could use at the table. It told me what hands I could never play because the money odds were never good enough, including suited connectors, which need so much money become, before they become profitable. So I can't tell you what hands to play. I can't. I can only tell you what hands you can never play unless you get so many money odds. Of course, a raise throws everything out the window. Different story. This is against random opponents, and uh, but it certainly helps people to know that the, there are hands you can never play and what they are. The dogs of poker. Playable hand system. In Michael J. Berry's 1987 book, Mixed Nuts, Optimum Strategy for Limit Hold'em, his computer played thousands of hands for all two-card hands, suited or not, against from one to ten opponents. I condensed his 3,380 results into a tool to tell me not what hands to play, but what hands to never play. The dogs of Hold'em. Now, in this... Uh, chart here the hands combinations on the left bottom quadrant represent suited hands and which are playable and the ones to the right going the other direction are horizontally are the unsuited hands so what we can see is immediately against one opponent when you pick up an ace in your hand it doesn't matter whether it's an ace king or ace deuce suited or ace king or ace deuce unsuited they're all positive expectation more than 50 percent 52 percent because um mr barry computed in the fact that you're going to have to pay antis and a house rake so your hands are a little bit better to cover the rake now looking at kings from of course aces and kings and pairs are all playable all the way down to a pair of the fours but notice that a pair of threes and twos are not in the green, are not green light playable. Let's look at the kings. Now, the second column down, you have kings headed by the queen and the jack and the ten, all the way down to king three suited. Expect to break even against one opponent. But king deuce suited is yellow. You have to wait till you get a second opponent before that'll become profitable. But against one opponent, all suited kings down to the king three expect to break even. And all unsuited kings, now along the second row at the top, kings towards the right, you could play all the way down to king suited, un, I mean king unsuited seven to break even. But king suited six, unsuited six, you'll need two opponents to break even. So when you have a suited king, you can play all the way down to the three. But when you have an unsuited king, you can only play down to the seven. Now let's look at the suited queens. Well, suited queens run all the way down from the queen jack down to the queen six. And then suited ja oh, unsuited queens run from the queen jack down to the queen eight, not the queen six. For the suited jacks, you can go from jack all the way down to the jack 10, jack nine, jack eight, jack seven. And for unsuited, you can go jack 10, jack nine, jack eight. For the tens, well, guess what? You can't play any tens unsuited, but you can play 10, 9, and 10, 8 suited, and no nines. So, if I'm playing heads up, a general rule of thumb is that if you have unsuited cards, your minimum hand must contain a jack with an 8. Queen 8, not Queen 7. King seven and ace deuce. Those are what we see in the unsuited. Now, when we're looking at the suited, we can see that, well, we can play the 10, 9, 10, 8, and we can play the jacks down to the seven, and the queens down to the six, and the kings down to the three. Now, what he found was, because when you're playing heads up, you try to get to 50%, you find that the extra 6% you get for a suited hand doesn't really add up much towards 50%. And that's why big cards are so important when you're playing heads up. 
But let's say you add another opponent. Well, now you're not trying to get to 50%. You're only trying to get to 33% because you're getting two to one on your money. Now, with two opponents, aha, the king deuce suited is now playable with two opponents. And the king six unsuited is now playable with a second opponent. Also, you can now play some unsuited 10s. You'll see this, uh, the column there, 10, 9, and 10, 8 can both be played when you have a second opponent. So, when I used to say with one opponent, you need at least a jack 8. With two opponents, you need at least a 9, 8. Now, when you're looking at uh, two opponents, you find that all of a sudden now, in the flushed hands, the suited hands, the 9-8 plays, the 9-7 suited, the 8-7 suited, and the 10-7 uh, suited. So, when you get a second opponent, you can play all of your suited hands down to the bottom card a 7 for your connectors. Now, staying with the suited hands, notice that with a third opponent, all your 6s become playable. 6-jack, 610, 6'9, 6'8, 6'7. Very, very neat. So I made up what I call a rule of nine. You count the number the bottom card, six, subtract from nine, and that tells you how many bets you have to have in the pot to stay. Now let's take a look at uh, the five there. So we're talking about how many fives are playable. Well, you got the Queen five, of course, that only needs two people. And the jack five just needs three people. But when you look at the ten five, now you need four people. When you look at the nine five, well, you need five. But when you look at the eight five and the seven five and the six five, they all need four. Again, pretty close to the rule of nine. So, same thing with the fours now. Let's look at the bottom card four. You can have from the, uh, yeah, you can have queen four, you need three opponents. Jack four, you need four opponents. Now, here's the interesting one. Uh, ten four, you need five. And then could skip four. Six four and five four, you need five. So it's almost a rule of four, nine again. And of course, the simplest one is to take the column of the tens down for a moment. You'll see that the tens are playable all the way down to ten eight with against one opponent. But with a second opponent, you can play down to ten seven. And with a third opponent, you can play down to 10-6. And with a fourth opponent, you can play down to 10-5. And with a fifth opponent, you can play down to 10-4. And with a sixth opponent, you can play down to 10-3. And with a seventh opponent, you can play down to 10 do suited. So, the tens are a perfect, perfect rule of nine column. The other ones have a few little deviations. But you're always safe to know that the answer is close to the rule of nine for your suited card. So a pair of twos and a pair of threes aren't playable until you get seven opponents. Doesn't happen often. You'll see me play a pair of twos or threes. One exception. The pair of threes has a star because it's playable against one opponent also. Okay? So it's almost as good as a pair of fours. Not much, but against one opponent you can play it. Otherwise, two, three, four, five, six, unplayable. You gotta wait for seven opponents before you can play twos or threes. So when I see people turn up twos and threes <laughs> and they didn't have to put in money, I know they made a mistake. There are those hands, the red ones there, that you can never, ever play. Let me give you an example. With the queen eight unsuited. Well, that's about 51% your way, but with the queen seven, it's 49. Hmm. What about the jack? Eight and the jack seven, same thing, 51-49. Well, let's say there's two opponents. Well, with the jack eight, you're going to be 34%, slight winner. And with the jack seven, you'll be 32%, slight loser. Same with the queen eight, slight winner, queen seven, slight loser. So I call those the dogs of poker. And if I ever see a student turn one of those up, and who put in money when he didn't have to, I can slap him in the head and say, those are hands you should have never played. And if he turns up one of the s yellow hands, the maybes, remember like there's gold, green, there's stop, red, and there's yellow maybe. And of course, there it is. He'd have to explain, well, I was getting three to one and that's why I stayed and I went, okay. So you know, for instance, that if I called a bet and there were four bets in the pot, 
that you know that I've got to have at least, if I've got a suited hand, a five as my base card. And so that's why I can sit there and I wait and I wait and I wait and I see, do I have my four bets so I can play this suited five as my base card? No, nope. ditch it. So sometimes I play them, sometimes I don't, but it's always a function of this precise little mechanism that tells me exactly how many bets I need in the pot to break even. Now, these are all marginal hands. If someone raises, everything goes out the door. This is when you're playing against three random opponents. And it also presumes that they're all going to stay with you all the way to the end because that's what he did. And so therefore, it's not that realistic. You may say my skill can overcome an initial disadvantage. I'm saying why accept an, over an original disadvantage at all if you don't have to. So memorize the red ones. Never turn them up. Learn your green ones and play them cautiously. A raise changes everything. And as for the yellow ones, well, you can learn that quite easily and that'll let you know when you can play those suited connectors profitably.